Dr. Bernstein's work has inspired a countless number of researchers and students to pursue a career in the medical sciences. His vision tells us that we have the potential to make a difference too. Alan Bernstein was born and raised in Toronto with a very active childhood and school life. In high school I was active in everything uh, from the swim team to orchestra to the UN club, uh, camera club. I loved being in the orchestra and I think what I liked about it was it was, you know, you're with 60 or 70 other bright kids making music together. It was wonderful. I went into mass physics and chemistry at U of T. Uh, I did quite well at it, but I did really enjoy it. I, I love the math. I've always loved mathematics. Uh, I worked hard, did well, but I knew I wasn't going to be a physicist when I grew up. And again, I stumbled onto Harold Johns, who was very famous for developing the cobalt bomb for cancer therapy. And so I ended up doing my summer studentship with uh, Jim Till at, at the Princess Margaret, and then I um, uh, did graduate work with him. He set up uh, in leukemia using a, a, vir a retroviral system of, called friend virus, basically worked out uh, this uh, progression steps that ended up uh, yielding a lot of fruit because uh, with that system he was able to uh, mine uh, additional genes that were uh, important uh, in the uh, process of of a tumor, a normal cell becoming abnormal. When I was a graduate student, what Tilla McCullough, my supervisors, had discovered was there was a mouse mutant called W, and W stands for white. So these mice um, have, they're anemic, they're severely anemic, they're white instead of being black on a black background, and they're, they're sterile. So they have defects in three different stem cells in, in, in a mouse, and I found that just a phenomenally interesting uh, uh, phenomenon. And I was determined to isolate the gene. And along the way, he basically identified, you know, one of the critical uh, receptors uh, that had been known for a long time, but he actually identified the gene. And it turned out to be an oncogene, uh, so the kit receptor. And it turned out to be a receptor, one of these antenna on the surface of cells that receive signals. And like a lot of receptors we now know, those are targets for mutations in cancer. Alan's work uh, really set the stage. So he's, he could really be considered a pioneer of gene therapy because uh, some of the key papers uh, came out of his lab on being able to take, make viruses and then put genes into blood cells, into blood stem cells. And, uh, and, and that really helped to set the stage for that entire field. A spectacularly good research career uh, when he was a world-leading retrovirologist and a major cell biologist in the Samuel Lunenfeld Institute in Toronto. He then went on to direct that institute uh, and then he moved into a major leadership role as the first director and CEO of the Canadian Institutes for Health Research. He expanded the whole scope of the health research community in Canada to include not only biomedical and clinical researchers, but also to include health services and population health researchers. And was in fact the first agency in the world to actually take those steps, and it's an it's a approach that's now been widely used internationally. I would frequently meet colleagues in Europe who would say, we simply can't do here what you can do in Canada. The kinds of collaborations, the partnerships bringing cancer researchers and aging researchers and health services researchers together in innovative ways. So he set the standard internationally for what health research should look like. It was a leadership for the world in terms of what Canada was able to do during that time. I think personally, because I was his student, um, I feel that his biggest accomplishments were in mentoring the next generation of, of scientists and there's a lot of, um, a lot of failure involved in research but he never saw it that way and he taught me not to see it that way. Um, that we always learn from whatever we're doing if we do it properly and he, he, he applied a lot of rigor to the types of approaches that we use to solve our problems um, but always with this very positive um, point of view. He then went on and worked in the HIV world, managing a major institution in New York which oversaw many of the global initiatives for HIV research. 
And then most recently, he's been involved in the Canadian Institute for Advanced Research. I love being at CIFAR. We bring together some of Canada and the world's really best researchers to address some of the most important questions of our time. Probably the most important thing uh, that Alan taught was that it's possible to play at the front edges of science. Uh, and uh, that's a lesson that has, you know, has been infused on, on me and, and on, on a whole generation of, of uh, trainees that went through his lab. A pioneering cancer researcher, inspirational mentor, and innovative national and global leader, Canadian Medical Hall of Fame laureate, Dr. Alan Bernstein.